Good morning. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. And this table is the number of STEM grads by country in the year 2020. 820,000 graduates from STEM programs in the United States, which is misleading and we'll get back to why in a minute. China, India, Russia, Indonesia, Brazil, Iran, are BRICS countries, the emerging economic and trading block of natural resources economies that mine everything and that build everything. This chart shows the percentage of college graduates from STEM fields, same year 2020. 41% of China's graduates are in STEM, Russia at 37% and so on. The US is at 20%. Those are the numbers. Other countries graduate many more. Engineers and scientists in Western countries do. And students in those countries study engineering and the hard sciences at much higher rates. In other words, every year the pipeline for top engineering talent grows everywhere but at home. This analysis comes from the Semiconductor Industry Association and this forecast in particular is not hard to make. The size of the semiconductor industry in the United States today is 345,000. That's how many people work designing and building semiconductors now. The industry will need 460,000 engineers and technicians by 2030, and there won't be nearly that many. We'll be short at least 27,000 engineers. The association sees a shortage of 12,300 master's degree level scientists and engineers, and over 5,000 PhDs. Those are scientists who need to be in university right now and who are not. 2030 is five years away, so engineers who will be completing graduate school level work need to be in class today somewhere, but they're not. And the comparatively small number of U.S. grads are going to be in high demand by all industries, and the semiconductor industry is just one of them. We have engineering talent shortages everywhere. Clean energy, petroleum engineering also, medicine, biotech, AI, telecom, aerospace, manufacturing. The shortage of skilled STEM workers is a problem for the whole economy, not just in computer chips. Economy-wide across all computer science industries, the shortage is 1.4 million people. Back to why this chart is much worse than it appears. These are graduates of American universities, but many of them are not Americans. Over half the master's level graduates in engineering are foreigners. For PhDs, it's 60%. 80% of the foreign master's degree engineers and a quarter of the doctorates leave after graduation. That's a total of 16,000 master's and doctorate level engineers leaving the United States every year. The semiconductor chip companies have plans to take these billions of dollars the federal government is handing out to build plants. But nobody in the industry believes that there will be the people available to work in them. $39 billion is being used to build new semiconductor plants or expand old ones. And companies are lining up for the money and pledging to spend another $210 billion more. But the labor market is tight right now. They can't find the workers for the plants they have today. Too few students know about the industry at all, so they're not signing up for university classes. Then again, the problem that a lot of the ones that are in our universities are going back to their home countries as soon as they get their diplomas. In China, these shortages for top engineering talent are much more manageable because there's just a lot more of them and a lot more on the way. This is an astounding data point that 44% of China's engineers are under the age of 30 compared to one-fifth in the United States. So compensation packages for Chinese scientists and engineers is one-eighth. A company can hire 80 Chinese scientists or 10 American ones for the same money. So semiconductor companies know that the talent pools are in China right now but they worry that they may never show up in the United States or in Europe. But they have another problem, because China is the biggest market for semiconductor chips. Most of the computer chips in the world are built here, and most of them are used here. Intel is an American company and has 12,000 employees in China. 
and China is 27% of Intel's revenue. Intel has announced plans to expand their chip packaging and testing facility in Chengdu, spending $300 million. And $300 million goes a lot farther in Chengdu than in Chicago, and they can hire eight times as many people. Intel has equity stakes in 43 Chinese companies. ASML is a Dutch company with China sales of over $10 billion. China is 36% of their sales and they're building a new maintenance facility in Beijing. These are cold realities that semiconductor companies are happy to claim billions of dollars in federal money to lay concrete in Arizona and in a few other places while they're telling themselves that nobody has a clue who's going to be working there. But it's free federal money, so what's not to like? Then they make pledges to put in another 10 billion or another 100 billion years down the road. Meanwhile, down the road from here, right now, they are building and hiring, having no problem staffing out their engineering teams in their biggest customer market. Here is another cold reality. The United States at 820,000 STEM graduates, if we back out the ones who are going to the airport the day after graduation, the U.S. number is closer to 500,000. Russia is ahead of us, and that puts this into better perspective. There are roughly eight times as many Chinese engineers and scientists graduating every year compared to American ones. We need to stop being dismissive of the BRICS countries, and right now, these are the countries that run massive trade surpluses in energy and raw materials and food and manufactured products. They send us products and we send them money. Those are the countries that mine everything. Those are the countries that farm everything. Those are the countries that make everything. And those are the countries where their kids are learning how to make everything. This is Lan Shi Jinhua in Zhejiang. Be good. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom.